So what are we doing now? What do we do next? I am. We are going to install the tail lights and and the blackout lights in the rear end of the Jeep there on the tail end. So tail lights. All right. We got some uh, some turn signals on there too, right? No, no, no turn signals on the G503 Jeep. They didn't, you got this turn signal with your with your arm, so there's no turn signal. There's no there. turn signals there. Mm -mm. Well, hell, it'll fit just fine here in South Carolina then. <laughs> Welcome to Team G503. I'm Scott Schiller. And I'm Scott Schiller. And this video, as you probably already know, we're going to be doing the, the marker lights, the tail lights, the brake light in the back side there of the G503 Jeep. And there is no turn signals, that, that's for There's sure. No turn signals. Back in World War II, that wouldn't have been necessary. There is purposes and reasons for those lights, and we will explain them to you in this video. It's, it's not really hard, but this is an essential thing. Most important thing is getting those things grounded in the right locations, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take off and, and let's go out in the back and get it done. In looking through the master parts manual, I discovered there was a nut, a lock washer, and an internal and external star washer that was to be used to install these Corcoran Brown taillights. My issue was that the star washer I could find locally was falling inside the groove and in no way would make contact with the bracket on the tub, so there would be no ground and then thus there would be no working lights. In order to remedy that, I took a wire wheel and we wire wheeled off all the paint from previously painting them on the post and on a little bit on the outside of the housing as shown here. That should make a good ground ground contact area. What I did was I installed a quarter inch washer that fit perfectly inside the recess and then I installed the star lock washer on top of that so it would just protrude past the casing just a little bit enough to make contact with the bracket. I then went outside and took the Dremel tool and we ground off about a quarter of an inch around on each side of the inside of the bracket here as shown just so I'm going to get a good bite with that star washer and not have the paint impede that fact. After I got done with both holes on the back side of the bracket, I moved to the inside of the tub and did the same thing on the mounting holes on the inside. The inside of the bracket's a tight little spot, so be careful there when you're using the Dremel tools. You see, we slipped a little bit ourselves. Here we are on the underneath side of the tub of the back side of the bracket, and again, I'm just going to remove a quarter inch of all the paint in the primer and get down to bare metal there. This is where the lock washer is going to also bite into the back side of the bracket, and then we can put the nut, and it's going to make for a nice ground point and contact. We'll wipe up all the dust and the residue from grinding off the paint, and while we do that, I'm going to be working on part number A627. It's a pair of rubber grommets that go around the sheet metal that actually surround your taillights. I'm using a product from 3M called Weather Stripping Sealant, and you see here I've put a thin layer around the whole perimeter of both of the grommets. You have to let this tack up a bit before you stick it onto its surface, and then you also have to apply a thin layer onto the actual surface you are sticking it to. The vertical surface here on the rear of the tub where the tail light gets installed is a little bit more difficult to install the weather sealant to, but if you just take your time and put a very thin layer around the whole perimeter of this opening, it'll mount very nicely and your grommet will not come out. On the back side here, like I say, it's a little bit more difficult. This stuff likes to stick to me and you and everything else, but it's also going to keep that grommet right in place. After about 5 or 10 minutes of letting the sealant tack up, just go ahead and take your grommet and slowly work it around the outside edge of the opening of where your tail light will go. If you have a little bit extra that pops out of the side or oozes out, it's okay. It's almost dry at this point, and once it does dry, you can wipe that off pretty easily with some alcohol so you don't damage your paint. We'll go ahead now and install the housing. I'll show you again the back side here where we've got our washer and our star washers. And then this is going to be installed when you flip it around the back side. You'll see those two tabs that will hold the actual covers in place. Those go towards the top. There's also a dimple in the bottom side of the housing where there's a groove on the cover that slips in. On the back side of the bracket here, we'll install a lock washer and a nut on both sides of the post, and that's what's going to make the ground contact on the back side of the bracket, so we've actually got double coverage making sure we've got a proper ground. Once you install both of the nuts, just go ahead and finger tight them down for the time being, and after you get them finger tight, we'll take a 7 16 inch wrench, and then we'll go ahead and snug everything up, drawing that star washer and that lock washer into that bare metal. At the end, make sure you've got everything really tight because tight and bright is what's going to make that good ground. Last but not least, I want to show you these covers that go on. I won't be installing them in this video, but I want you to notice that there is a difference. And I've got them set here in the jerry can holder in their locations, both passengers and driver side. Note the differences here in the covers. We'll be doing a comprehensive installation of these and show you exactly how they function and how they work. But for the time being, I'm going to leave them off because I'm wiring the harness under the underneath side of the Jeep. And in order to install the socket wires into the back, the bulbs have to be out. 
So keep your eye out for that video in the near future. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, not no, too hard. So bad. Right in. Did you remember to put the bulbs? No, 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 no. We didn't, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't, we didn't put the bulbs yet on purpose because in, the, in this series, if you follow the wiring series, you have to remove the bulbs in order to make those connections. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Yeah, right, right, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> All right, my friends. Until next time. Wait a minute. I didn't do the plug about subscribing because we've got a lot of subscriptions lately. We're pushing 5,200 subscriptions. And this thing is rolling. I'm pretty Rookie certain. numbers. Got to pump those numbers. Rookie up. numbers. Rookie numbers. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyways, if you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button there on the bottom and also hit that little bell so you get notifications of when we release the next video. Until next time, my friends, let's see if you remember. Until next time, my friends, keep it safe. Keep it jeeping. No, happy jeeping. Happy, happy jeeping. I'm kidding. Bye, y'all. <laughs>